Self-care is more than just candles and bubble baths. It's in intangible things like boundary setting and healthy decision making. Don't be so caught up in aesthetics because the true practice of self-care isn't going to be Instagrammable. I tweeted that on April 15th, 2022. And it was really during a time where I was coming to the realization that I cannot just obtain things to care for myself. Caring for myself is a form of work. Caring for myself is a commitment to my future self as well as my current self. And it's really about actualizing the potential of who I am, building a sustainable lifestyle, and building better relationship with people, building positive habits, Self-care isn't always going to be comfortable. It's more than just pampering and enjoyment and relaxation. Yes, those things are necessary sometimes, but I think it's very important for us to expand our definition of self-care in order for us to truly do the work that's not only good for us as individuals, but for us as the collective. So what does true self-care look like? Definition number one. Self-care looks like controlling your emotions. Emotional regulation is essential if you want to navigate the world in a less anxious state. And it can just look like taking a breath when you feel emotionally triggered and asking yourself the following questions. Why do I feel this way? Does this require a response out of me? Am I reacting to the current situation? Or is this situation triggering a specific memory that I am now reacting to? It's really important to have this conversation with yourself whenever you feel emotionally charged in order for you to make decisions and take actions that are rooted from a place of calm and from a place of, of reason. A lot of times when we do not control our emotions, we make decisions, we are very rash, and we end up reacting in ways that can be for our detriment or the detriment of others. Definition number two. Self-care also looks like practicing patience. This can help with emotional regulation, but it also helps you develop a better relationship with yourself and with other people. It allows us to extend grace and really trust that in the end, things will work out. Sometimes it's important to remember that in the current moment, we don't have all the information that we need to move forward with a certain sense of certainty. And we have to practice patience in order to be in a emotional state and a mental state that can allow us to receive the information and the context that we need when it's time for us to receive it. Sometimes we attach urgency to our lives and put undue pressure on ourselves to attain certain things within a certain time frame. But patience really allows you to have the clarity that you need to make decisions when it's right. And sometimes we just need the patience to see the results and the rewards of our persistence and consistency. Definition number three. Self-care also looks like having discipline. Ask yourself this question. Do I care about myself enough to do what I need to do to be who I want to be? That's what discipline is about. Discipline is about choosing your future self, caring for your future self, and doing what you need to do today to yield the results that you want. Developing discipline also allows you to have more self-confidence. You trust yourself because you do the things that you say you're going to do. And that, that boosts your confidence, that, that allows you to attain more self-worth. Definition number four. Self-care looks like creating systems that you can rely on. One of my favorite books is Atomic Habits by James Clear. And a quote from that book goes as follows. You do not rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. It's really, really important for you to create the environment that makes it easier for you to accomplish what you need to do. Now, creating systems that you can rely on doesn't have to be a very complicated thing. 
most of the time it's really just about forward thinking and one of the examples in the book is if you want to make sure that you get more exercise in keep your sneakers in a place that you know that you're always going to see them another example is if you know that you have a hard time waking up in the morning and you're always hitting snooze on your alarm make it out of reach take your phone put it in the bathroom and make sure that you have to get up and go all the way over there to turn it off in the morning and then you're already there to get ready so really creating a system that you rely on is knowing your tendencies building that self-awareness and making sure that you craft out your day or craft out certain habits or placing objects in certain locations so that you don't fall to those tendencies that you might have and that way you create new systems that you can then rely on to get what you need to get done in a way it's kind of like tricking your brain but it's more deliberate definition number five self-care also looks like setting boundaries now, setting boundaries is something that requires you to have a lot of self-awareness because you need to know your limits and you need to know what situations require you to exceed them at some point and what situations don't really require that and actually hinder you when you constantly meet that limit. And that could be when it comes to your work, that could mean uh, when it comes to your relationships with other people and knowing how to state and assert uh, what you can and cannot do and what you can and cannot tolerate is a form of self-care. It allows you to create an environment that is optimal for your growth, for your success, and for you to develop true, genuine relationships with other people that's not going to hinder your emotional, physical health, that's not going to keep you in a state of discomfort that is to your detriment. Definition number six. Self-care also looks like learning new things, keeping your mind sharp, expanding your understanding of the world. Learning new things really allows you to develop new knowledge and skill sets that can help you progress in life, but they can also teach you that you can always be unlocking more of your potential and you can always learn things that can even bring you closer to yourself. Definition number seven. Self-care also looks like practicing your communication skills. You cannot care for yourself. You cannot assert yourself without knowing how to communicate. And being able to be there for yourself looks like being able to say what you have to say when it's time to say it. So improving your communication skills also allows you to develop better relationships with other people. It allows you to create an environment and learn how to cultivate an environment where you can articulate your voice. And it comes with practice, it takes time, but making an effort to learn how to do that is essential for you to know how to care for your whole self and the person that you are inside as well. Definition number eight. Self-care looks like practicing gratitude. It's really hard to be sad when you're thankful and when you invite that level of joy and happiness that comes with the acknowledgement that there are things in your life that are worth being grateful for. So taking the time to do that, taking the time to really call out by name and be specific about the things in your life, the people in your life, the qualities in yourself that you are grateful for is really essential to taking care of your current environment, your current mental environment, and establishing an understanding that where you are right now is a time that is worth being thankful for. And it's okay to aspire, it's okay to yearn for things at times, but it's important to be present in what you have in the moment. And you have to make sure that you don't take things for granted. Definition number nine. Self-care also looks like taking accountability. When was the last time that you admitted that you were wrong? When was the last time that you apologized for being wrong and made sure that you took the steps to improve or to make sure that you don't end up in that situation again. Being able to take accountability allows you to grow. It requires you to have the self-awareness to assess yourself within a situation without getting defensive. 
and this is really necessary for you to have uh, better interpersonal relationships but also for you to continue to facilitate growth within yourself Taking accountability isn't just about apologizing for your wrongdoings, it's also taking responsibility over your actions and knowing when you shouldn't turn yourself into a victim, when in reality you just need to take ownership of what was going on and move forward knowing that you are in control of your actions and you know what you need to do to get better. Definition number 10. Self-care also looks like having integrity. Being able to act in a way that is in accordance with what you believe, being able to make sure that you don't create dissonance between your actions and those thoughts that you have, and making sure that you stand strong in your values despite people trying to sway you or things that you're seeing online giving you a different idea that you know is not aligned with what you want to do you have to make sure that you are strong within that because by sticking to your values and having that integrity you don't put yourself in a situation to be disappointed in yourself you don't put yourself in a situation that you don't even recognize yourself. So having integrity is a form of self-care. It's a form of caring for not just who you are, but for maintaining that, that sense of, of pride in who you're becoming. And that's it for today. Make sure that you like and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next one.